So now, let's take a look at how the cars are ready to line up for the Budweiser G.I. Joe's 200. 29 cars here, and here is a look at the starting grid. On the pole, it's Nigel Mansell, the fourth pole of the season for the PPG points leader. Alongside Emerson Fittipaldi, the winner of last month's Indianapolis 500. In row two to the inside is Stefan Johansson, the best start ever for the sophomore from Sweden. And Paul Tracy is alongside the winner at Long Beach in April. In the third row, Mario Andretti, a back-to-back -back winner here in 85 and 86. And Mark Smith, an astonishing qualifying run for the Oregon native. In the fourth row, it's Teo Fabi, who has never run worse than seventh here at Portland. And Danny Sullivan, the winner of that thriller in Detroit two weeks ago. In row five, it's Al Unter Jr. His first career win came here in 1984. And Robbie Gordon, who ran third in the season opener at Australia. The sixth row is Raul Boisel, has three runner-up efforts this season. And Mike Groff, who outqualified his boss, Bobby Rahal. In the seventh row, Willie T. Ribbs, who had a strong run two weeks ago in Detroit. And Ari Leyendijk, who finished second here in 88. In the eighth row, it's Bobby Rahal and Scott Goodyear. Row nine, Roberto Guerrero and Brian Till. In row number 10, Scott Brayton and Hiro Matsushita. Row 11, Olivier Briard and Jimmy Vassar. In the 12th row, it's David Kudrave and Kevin Kogan. Row 13, Lynn St. James and Ross Bentley. Row 14, Marco Greco and Johnny Unzer. And in the 15th row, Jeff Wood. This track has been incredibly lucky for being located in the Pacific Northwest. They've gotten away with very little rain, in fact, it only rained in the entire history of the event on one afternoon practice session. So, Derek, now they line up. They take a look at the final turn and the field in pretty good alignment here. But, of course, they're going to be thinking about the start. And Emerson will be a bit gun shy here. But look at this. Mansell gets a little jump. Now, he knows he has to lead. Emerson will be a bit gun shy. Oh, Mansell takes a run at it. So Nigel Mansell begins to throttle up coming off the quarter. The green flag comes out. They head down for that chicane as they begin to spread out. Bobby Rahal took an interesting line to the inside well back in the field. The rest of the field coming through three abreast in one area. Very tight in this section of the race course. The accordion down and everyone is through clean as Nigel Mansell pulls out of the lead. Followed by Fittipaldi, Stefania Hansen and Paul. Well, he took advantage of pulling the wool over Emerson's eyes there. You see Mansa gets sideways. These tires are still not warm. But Mansa was not going to wait for anybody. As soon as he came round, turn nine, he gave it all the power he had, and he was gone. There was no argument there that the pole sitter was going to lead the first lap. Evenly spaced, first, second, and third. Mansell, Fittipaldi, and Johansson. Paul Tracy is sitting in fourth place right now. As they come onto the start finish straight for the first time, Mario Andretti sits back in fifth. Johansson is in third place there. Jan mentioned it earlier, he had a tremendous run in the warm up this morning, legitimately with that car full of fuel. Stefan knows that the Penske car is the best here this afternoon, or possibly the, one of the best, and he's quite prepared to bide his time here and let the race sort itself out, particularly in these early laps. Derek, what about development between the Penske cars in the Penske team and the Penske driven by Johansson? Does he get help from the Penske organization? He does get help, but believe it or not, they actually work separately. Tom Brown, who is one of the designers of the Penske car, works with Tony Bettenhausen. They work on their own tricks that Johansson likes. For example, he has a different rear suspension geometry, slightly altered from the factory cars, but he has a different rear suspension anti-roll bar because Johansson likes a stiffer rear end. They had to go and make one for him specifically because he liked it, so they do go their own way. But obviously you can see the performance of the factory cars and the private cars are very close. On the start-finish straight again, evenly spaced. Got a glimpse of Paul Tracy there as he closes on Johansson, who closes on Fittipaldi, the three Penske cars right together. And turn after turn, Johansson has been able to close a little bit. Under Breitke, he closes. You see Mansell just ahead. Mansell has watched these Penskys all through the weekend because he sees himself in the Lola, and then this big Penske attack comes all the time. I think the feeling is that as the race goes on, the Lola on full fuel becomes more difficult to handle. That is one of the things I personally going to watch for as this race begins to unfold. Fifth place is Mario Andretti. 
Mark Smith is running in sixth right now, followed by Danny Sullivan, Robbie Gordon, Al Unger Jr., and Mike Groff. A spectacular run, by the way, by Groff, who managed to outqualify his owner in the chassis that Bobby Rahal actually abandoned. Here's Mark Smith, all his friends, all his neighbors, all his family, everybody is here to watch him this afternoon. It, it was a tremendous performance to drag this car up to sixth place on the grid, and really for a rookie who has so little experience racing these cars, probably one of the biggest benefits he had uh, with this new team was they did so much winter testing, and really it's, it's, uh, it's, it's showing its benefits now. On board Danny Sullivan, that's Mark Smith just ahead as they battle for sixth place. Smith is able to pull ahead just a bit. Robbie Gordon is just behind Sullivan. Moisture on the lens there. Could be a light shower in the area or could be something off the car in front of him. What do you think? Well, I don't th No, that is rain. I'm sure that is rain because he is too far behind Mark Smith for that just to be moisture coming out of him. It rained earlier today during one of the race, but it looks like there's small amounts of rain on that uh, infield section. So we'll keep an eye on that, though. Obviously, it is sunshiny over most of this race course, and it is not uncommon in this area of the country for you to have just almost a single cloud move overhead, drop a few drops of water, and then move on. Let's hope that's the case here today. The indication over on the front side of the track uh, in the pit area here on the pit straight is that it's sunshiny, clear, and no rain whatsoever. So here's the freight train. Look at Danny Sullivan behind him. Robbie Gordon right behind him, so he's going to fill his mirrors. Then Al Unser Jr., never that worried about qualifying, but always, always a threat in the races. So there is a report from some of the corner workers now of fluid coming out of the back of car 25, which, of course, is Mark Smith's car. So maybe, in fact, that's a miss from the back of the car, though, as you pointed yeah. out, Gary. He's, he's a long way ahead of Danny Sullivan for, Sullivan for that to be getting yeah. on the uh, camera itself. No, don't, I don't, that's not from Mark Smith. Look how far ahead he is. But look, now we see blue sky here, but right outside our booth, when you look to the left, it is dark and gray. That is not yeah, that's from a, Mark Smith's That's car. not coming from Mark Smith because he was all the way around the corner at that point. Hopefully the uh, current observers aren't monitoring our radio and pull Mark Smith in for dropping blue. Ah, but they are going to black flag Mark Smith. Oh for what they report as a spray, so we'll keep an eye. There oh, it is, oh, on oh, the oh, back oh, of his car. You're absolutely right, you're absolutely right. So as he comes down, they start finish straight here. Mark Smith will see the black flag, which will bring him into the pits so that the officials and his own crew can look the car over. And that's too bad because he's been running solidly in sixth place and closing on fifth place, Mario Andretti. You're right now looking backwards from the leader, Nigel Mansell, second place, Fittipaldi. They maintain station here at the front of the field. So Nigel Mansell leads from the pole here in the first laps at the Budweiser G.I. Joe's 200 from Portland International. Back at the Budweiser G.I. Joe's 200, nothing has changed at the top of the order with the exception of Mark Smith slowing on the back stretch. Let's get an update from Jan. Well, Paul, that liquid you saw does appear to be coming from Mark Smith's car, and now you just see them giving the sign that whatever it is, it's a terminal problem. They're investigating right now at the back of the car in the gearbox area. That's too bad for Mark Smith. He had a spectacular run both in the morning session and in qualifying, and so much is expected out of him in his IndyCar career. So we wish him well, hope it continues on. Back at the front of the field, the red number five, Nigel Mansell continues his lead and for the time being Derek it seems that the Penske cars have decided to line up behind it. Yeah Mans is in control here. Good apology we see him just about two or three car lengths back able to just sit there and Johansson sits back behind him. Interesting, I spoke to Mansell after qualifying, I said, does this remind you of any Formula One track anywhere? And he thought, he said, no, it's such a unique track, he couldn't really say that it was like anything else except maybe a bit like Brands Hatch, uh, some of the corners, but he said it's so unique, particularly, he said, driving down the back straight, he said, when you can see Mount Hood, he said, where can you ever get such a setting like that uh, on a racetrack? Looking back from Mansell's car, a bit of Paldi, Johansson, and then Tracy, as Robbie Gordon makes his move on Danny Sullivan, and Al Unser Jr. comes up to battle with Danny as well. So Robbie Gordon, as seems to be his style, moving very early in this race and moving toward the front. 
Gordon was third fastest in the warm-up this morning. It's the Ford engine versus the Chevrolet in both the Gallus cars there. Robbie Gordon, of course, so spectacular almost every time he goes on the racetrack this year. Didn't qualify as well as he had hoped, but now that he's got by Sullivan, it'll be interesting to see whether he can just inch away in A.J. Foyt's car. The top ten affected only by the retirement of Mark Smith and the move of Gordon, so it's Mansell, Fittipaldi, Johansson, Paul Tracy, Mario Andretti. Then Robbie Gordon, Danny Sullivan, Allinger Jr., Raul Boisel, and Mike Groff. There's Bozell. You see Bozell's car. Again, not a man that ran as fast as we had expected because he'd been so good in the last two or three races. But Dick Simon going through a development phase with his own cars. We mentioned the Penske cars being developed by Tony Bettenhausen. Dick Simon's own engineers, Julian Robertson in particular, are aerodynamically uh, testing and developing this car, and it is different to other cars in the pit lane. It's difficult to get a close-up look, but they actually have a wingless, which is like a small wing, which is sits sideways in front of their radiator inlets, ducting air around the side pod, and hopefully uh, making this car aerodynamically more efficient. Let's jump back two positions now and ride with Bobby Rahal. He runs 11. That is his teammate, it is employee, such as it is, in front of him, Mike Groff. And this is an interesting comparison because Ray Hall, remember, started the year in the Ray Hall Hogan chassis. Then they decided it needed more development, and if they were going to make a bid for the championship, they should move back into a Lola until that car was more fully developed. But that car, the Ray Hall Hogan, is exactly what is being driven now by Mike Groff. So let's just ride with Ray Hall for a lap or two here and watch the closure, and also we can get an idea of the gear changes. This is first gear here. Double apex right-hander. They're 100 miles an hour through here. Listen to his throttle. Same gear. Now here's the blast down this long back straight. 175 miles an hour he'll reach here. Right up over the curve. At the front of the field, Nigel Mansell now beginning to encounter slower traffic, and Emerson Fittipaldi has pulled up right behind him, using this opportunity of the slower traffic to close. Now, this is where Fittipaldi, of course, has an advantage in that he is on a course looking to move outside of Nigel, lets him know he's there. He has experience on this track and more experience with these other drivers. So Fittipaldi has an opportunity to use both of those attributes to his advantage at this point. They both get past the slower traffic, though, but still there's more ahead. That was a good example of good defensive driving by Mansell. He never changed his line, but he drove straight to the apex. Therefore, Emerson had no chance to try and come down the inside while Mansell was slowed by that traffic, which is like with Marco Greco. We'll keep an eye on this fight for the lead, but in the meantime, let's check in with Jan Bikas. Mark Smith is now out of the car. What was the problem, Mark? Uh, we lost our differential about uh, five laps into the race. So, um, no, it's too bad for the Craftsman RC Aero car. We were had a good weekend going and thought we could have a strong result in the race. Had to be real excited about that qualifying position, especially with all your friends and family here. Yeah, it's, um, it's good to be able to perform well in front of the home crowd. So credit to um, the whole team, especially Gordon Coppock and Scott Miller and Mark Wido. They did a great job getting the car set up. We'll just get after it at Cleveland. Mark Smith out early, but a great run. 12 laps are complete here now. Danny Sullivan in seventh place trying to hold off his teammate, Al Unser Jr. He mentioned the name Gordon Coppock, a man I'm very familiar with. He was my engineer back in Formula One in 1981 when we struggled for half the season at least on the, on the March F1 car. So Gordon Coppock still motivated to be one, uh, a, a, an engineer, loves working with drivers making racing cars go faster. For the moment, this battle's static. We'll take a move back up toward the front of the field and take a look at the battle for the lead again.